All right, welcome and good evening. It is Friday, March 8, 2024. Let's get into the markets. Uh, nice little pullback today, which is super helpful uh, for our accounts, for sure. Loving what's going on in the market. Uh, we're excited to have uh, the weekend here, uh, but a good week in trading overall and great for our uh, members. So fantastic stuff going on in the community. So let's take a quick look at the account and then we'll get into a few more things on the business of trading. Uh, we'll also take a look at uh, just a few of charts. We'll do more of that over the weekend. Uh, so here's where we are. Let me make sure we're sharing everything with you guys. Uh, that we got it going. So let me share my screen. So here we go. Uh, let's take a look. So today we ended the week uh, with our deltas sitting at minus 84. And I'll double check, see where that is in the after hours here a bit. Uh, now it's moved a bit. So it's hard to tell what but tasty but uh end of the day right at the end the close we were about negative 84 with the market starting to fall that should push deltas up a bit for us overall extraordinarily delta neutral which is perfect up down doesn't really matter we're diversified we're delta neutral uh certainly helps out our margin and our risk uh as well if we take a look at our theta on the day 1190 uh, on theta for the session uh, yep, so that's exactly where we finished uh, today. No change from yesterday, so still about 0.27, almost 0.3. Pretty good theta for considering where things are overall right now. I'm happy with our theta. Uh, our net lick uh, moved up today, 436, 446. So a nice up day in the markets or in our account. So market down, account up, love the saying. So uh, MDAU, uh, as we uh, term it in the Discord. Uh, so market down, account goes up. Uh, we finished the day with buying power around 269.821, which is a 51.86, so 52% of our uh, net lick is uh, being used in buying power. And that's after we subtract our bill uh, as well. So we, we've got that. In fact, uh, we should have gotten a distribution from bill. I didn't even check today or tomorrow, well, yesterday or today, see if that happened as well. But we keep, uh, we keep making money while the rest of the trades continue to work. So overall, love where we are on the position. Uh, we're still up uh, over almost 11% on the year so far. We did manage to close some trades today. Uh, after really two days of, of nothingness, I will tell you that the last three days, I really haven't done a whole lot of anything. You know, my buying power has been sitting right at 50 for, I mean, as far back as you can see here, 40, 50. So there's really no buying power to use. So no real trades to put on. Uh, we did take a little bit of a loss this week on a strangle, uh, but overall doing pretty good. Good Had a nice win on Monday and then a little bit more today. Let's talk about what happened on today. What we did today was we closed uh, a covered strangle opportunity. So what we do in several underlines that are you know, showing bullish uh, tendencies on our charting, uh, we're going to sell around 30-day uh, what we call covered strangles. And the way we set this up is we're going to sell two naked puts. Those two naked puts actually uh, represent a synthetic covered strangle because the first naked put uh, really represents the fact that we bought the stock at X price down here and we sold a at the money call against it. So if you buy the stock and sell a call, it's the exact same thing as selling a naked put. So we have that and then right below it, uh, so now you've got your own, technically, uh, the stock and sold a call. And then we also sold another put right below it that simulates uh, the entire covered strangle. That's to start and get into the trade. Uh, now, we put this on in gold. We were expecting to wait 30 days, take our profit. But we managed to get almost 70% out of this trade in just four days. If I'm going to get 70% in four days, why would I wait another 26 days to maybe get the other 30% of the trade? I'm just going to close it, take the win, nice return on margin. So if you're getting on average, you know, three to 4% return on margin in four days, I don't think anyone should complain about that. So great trade uh, overall. Uh, we just closed them out. Small p &L win, but overall pretty good. So I like where we are uh, on that. So that, Again, gave us a little bit of a gain for the day. Uh, that'll uh, come out in the spec trades uh, down here. So overall, uh, yeah, we're uh, a little bit negative on the month this week because of the gold strangle that we closed. But it was a good 
good thing that we closed it. Okay. We stick to our principles. We didn't gamble that, oh, it's going to reverse and what have you. We stuck to it and gold just kept running higher. So anyone that stayed in is getting hammered because you thought you might be smarter than the market. I'm not smarter than the market. The market will always prove us wrong. It's one of my trade rules. Okay. Get out of the trade uh, and stick to your trade plan. And we did. We stuck to our trade plan. We're out. We're done. I don't even think about it. We move on. The only reason I think about it is I keep seeing this <laughs> loss in the middle of my PL. That'll get rectified uh, sooner than later. All right. Uh, so let's uh, jump in now uh, and take a look at uh, where things are in the markets. Uh, so let's see if we can switch screen sharing here and let's take a look at some of the charts uh, that we have. Let me get my face off the screen so that you guys can see the whole chart. There we go. All right, perfect. So SPX on the day dropped a little bit over 33 points on the session. Here's how things are stacking up right now as we look at it. I mean, this is a monster uptrend. We did some work on this the other day. Uh, this is about as big of, of a climb that we have seen without really a major pullback at all. Uh, where can this thing pull back? Well, if you look at 50% retracement, it's gonna be around the 460 level. Okay, anything above that, you know, maybe the 21 might be sitting somewhere around the 38 uh, percent uh, FIB retracement. But overall, on the weekly, you have our first weekly down bar, okay, in a while, you know, it's in the last three weeks. The last one happened, and then we kept rallying higher. So one, uh, one bar on the MACD doesn't make a trend. We're going to have to wait and see if we can get a couple uh, in a row. But squeeze, definitely first uh, momentum down bar uh, that we've had. So we have just overextended. You can see at RSI overextended here as well. And I'm using a 75-25 and not the standard 70-30. So this is pretty doggone overextended. And again, you can stay overextended. We'll see how long that lasts. Uh, but good uh, doji candle uh, here today. A lot of indecision for the week. Here, if we look at the daily on SPY, uh, coming back down, we'll see if we can hold on to this uh, uptrend line in this ascending wedge. If we break through it, you've got the 21 to worry about first, which if that happens, you would probably trigger a bearish PSAR signal. Then we'll worry about the 50. Uh, then we'll worry about anything else uh, after that. Is this the start of, of a pullback? I don't know. But if we're looking at RSI, and this was the high on the RSI, okay? RSI has been diverging on all of these other recent highs, including today, which had a new high and RSI continues to fall. So you've got good RSI divergence. It is not supporting the market moving higher at this point in time. Uh, so there's S&P. Take a quick look at the Qs. Pretty much the same story as we've been mentioning. Not overbought. Heading a little bit lower on the weekly, but kind of the same thing. First down candle uh, and first down bar on the weeklies here. However, on the daily, a little bit worse. It, uh, you know, this uptrend line, we've punctured it before a couple of times and managed to stay above it. This time we're below it again. We broke down through the nine. We're not far from the 21. MACD's falling, RSI's falling, and squeeze is just kind of maintaining. We'll see what happens uh, next week. Do we get any follow through to the downside? Something to keep an eye on for sure. All right, RS uh, on the Russell, uh, good move uh, to the upside here today. Just you know, a huge doji candle. We finished way off the highs, way off the lows. A lot of indecision. We could still go either way. This candle, um, similar to this one here shows that the bulls just weren't able to keep this thing going. The bears weren't really able to drive it down hard either. So a lot of indecision this week. And on the day, uh, today we remain in the uptrend, uh, on the uptrend line, everything moving higher. Any pullback here might be a good opportunity for a bounce. And again, we can say that with any of the indexes. The VIX, Really didn't do a whole lot of anything today. It was up uh, 0.3, up 2% today. So a little bit of volatility pickup, 2%. I don't consider that a major move. 
Uh, but uh, we'll see. Now, the dollar, it finished way off its lows on the session. So you've got the squeeze firing to the downside. You've got MACD, RSI. You know, this is super negative, everything here pointing lower. But you did puncture the 3 ATR level, and you managed to rally back above it. Still a down day overall on the dollar. Uh, and you're still in a downtrend overall. But weekly's kind of just hanging sideways here a bit, even though this is a pretty substantial down week in the dollar. But it also put in a nice candle down here and finished way off of its lows. Can we see this thing uh, reverse back up or something next week, potentially? And then taking a look at the 10-year rates, uh, still falling, trying to hold their ground here. And again, I just think we move sideways uh, until June or beyond, uh, because that's when Powell says we're even going to look to consider uh, dropping our rates. So why should rates move a whole lot for the next couple months? I like the setup here. We're, we're weak on the daily. We're kind of strong and reversing upwards on the weekly. But you've got this big ascending uh, triangle. I don't think we break it necessarily and head down significantly lower. But if the Fed starts cutting rates or has to cut sooner, uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I like the fact that we held ground really for two days here, just slightly lower. All right, ES, we really already covered that in the uh, S&P. Let's take a quick look at oil today, heading into the weekend, or so you can make, guys can make some decisions on uh, what you want to do. All right. Still, this ascending triangle here, this thing just can't. In fact, you can even tighten this triangle up more than this longer term uptrend. Uh, we can even go somewhere along in here okay, and draw a line like this. Super tight uh, ascending wedge, ascending triangle, I should say here. We just can't get the momentum going on oil. Uh, it's up, it's down, it's just sideways. Bull bearish piece art triggered today. And the, the daily looks certainly bearish. The weekly looks still fairly bullish and heading into a squeeze. Okay. A lot of yin and yang here. I think oil setting up great strangle trade. Okay, Good strangle trade on oil uh, in here right now. Gold, unbelievable week on gold. Look at the breakout of this thing and smash to new all-time highs. And so we, in fact, today hit another yet another new all-time high. Gold just rocketing. So if you've got naked calls on gold or strangles or you've got uh, iron condors, you're going to get smoked uh, on those. Iron condors are probably killing you even more than a strangle because uh, you can't really roll out. And I don't think I would. Uh, you're not overbought on the weekly yet with the momentum heading higher. You are overbought on the daily but this thing looks like it still could have some legs to it. Any pullback would be another opportunity to move higher on gold. So I'd be very cautious on doing anything uh, to the downside. I think if we get any pullback on gold, beautiful 112 trade setup. Because if you get the pullback, you can fall maybe into the trap. But if you keep moving to the upside, you have no risk to the upside. I think this thing sets up perfectly for a 111 or a 112 trade. Bonds, we talked about rates. Uh, heading lower uh, or moving sideways, trying to hold their ground. And then that's exactly what happened here. We're failing again in this channel uh, that we've been looking at for many, many, many months. Okay, and Dating all the way back to the beginning of the year, you've just been trading in this channel up, down, up, down, up. Are we going to roll back down? I don't know. Squeeze potentially looks to be firing long a bit. Nice sideways day. Uh, today overall, I think bonds sets up well. I'm very bullish on bonds overall. One, one, two trades. I think strangle trades are still the a good play here in bonds. I think covered strangles the way we play them, uh, you know, bode really well. And I think ratio spreads bode well. We have all of those running right now, so we have every single one of those things running. Our one, one, two is up 115 percent. Our strangle is up 16 percent. Our covered strangles were up 90% in 11 days. Our ratio spreads up 26% in four days. And our no, new 112 is now up 50% in three days. I'm loving bonds. Uh, it's one of my favorite underlines right here. You can throw almost anything you want at this thing. A strangle, a 112, 
a ratio spread, anything that you want right now. I think bonds right now is one of the best setups uh, in the market. So I like bonds and I'd really like oil where it is. Taking a quick look at copper, it had a, two pretty big up days and then backed off today. Good for us overall. We've got a 112 trade and a strangle. So our strangle in copper, uh, just kind of flat. Uh, right now in the last couple of days. I mean, two big up days since we put it on, but a nice pullback today uh, in copper. Is it rolling over on the daily? Don't know, but it, we hit again this resistance level and then failed to add it once again. Uh, so we just continue to say tr trade sideways in this channel. I do like copper. I think it sets up well. The weekly sets up decently, a little bullish. The daily sets up, sideways i mean it's bullish right now uh and it could be a little bit more of an ascending triangle uh but you know i just don't know that it has a ton of power behind it so i think this thing really sets up uh well overall all right and then we'll take a quick look at the aussie dollar since we are in this with a strangle uh right now now this one's been moving pretty decently uh, and giving us a little bit of early pain. I mean, it's only down, yeah, we're down a little 20%, down a couple hundred bucks uh, on this trade in the first couple of days. Uh, why? Well, we've had two pretty solid up days on this thing. Uh, squeeze is firing. You've got the dollar weakening, but putting in a little bit of a base today. You had this thing way off of its highs. You know, was this the move? Do we move sideways? Do we drift up? There's really nothing to be gained from the weekly except using losing momentum on the squeeze, gaining momentum on MACD and RSI a bit, but really pretty flat. Uh, I still like uh, where we are uh, here, and I would not hesitate to uh, continue to to look at trades and this thing, especially if we do any kind of get any kind of a pullback here. All right, so there's some of the trades uh, that we're looking at. What I want to leave you with for the weekend is I want to continue this uh, talk that we've been when, uh, been focusing on for the last couple of days about trading as a business. So I spent the last couple sessions not only sharing my trades with you, sharing some charts and some ideas of where to go next week, okay, but I've also been or the next day, but I've also been sharing some of the insights from uh, this ebook that I'm. I'm uh, getting ready to put out there on uh, the business approach to trading. We spent some time talking about the difference between trading as a business versus trading as a hobby. Everything that goes into, into that piece, including the educational component. I want to talk a little bit today about foundations of trading as a business. So when you're when you're embarking on your journey to, you know, to treat trading as a serious business venture, if that's what you want to do, you need a solid foundation. You need to build one on clarity of purpose understanding the regulatory landscape, and really establishing a great operational environment for you to operate in. Take it seriously to treat your trading as a business. First thing that you really need to do here, if you've decided I'm no longer a hobby trader, I'm no longer just going to throw crap against the wall, I'm no longer going to keep trying all kinds of crazy, you know, YouTube, Twitter, discord channel guys whatever you find i'm not going to keep chasing everybody i'm going to be serious about this i'm going to take a step back i'm going to put together a plan and that's really what we spend the time with on our members we spend the time to help you develop a plan so you can trade effectively as a business that's really our main goal okay we're not here to teach you the the 112 and all the many versions and intricacies of, of the 112. Yep, that's a hallmark of one of the things that we do. We also trade a ton of strangles, ratio spreads. We trade in small accounts, large accounts, PM accounts, span margin accounts. We trade futures. We trade indexes. We don't care what you want to do. Okay, so It's a matter of trading training you to treat this as a business and putting your vision together. So the start of any business starts with a clear mission, a good vision, and some uh, strategic attainable goals. I'm going to ask you, if you're in our Discord, we've been doing this in our small group training sessions, uh, but I'm, if you're even if you're not in there, I'm going to ask you to do three things this weekend. I'm going to ask you to take a look at your mission and write a mission statement. And your mission statement should articulate the core purpose of your trading activities. It should answer your why. 
Why do I trade? Why do I want to trade? Could be financial independence, mastering the markets, uh, leveraging trading to help wealth creation. It might be to help your family. It might be just, I want to take a small account and grow it so for my child's education uh, to pay for college. Maybe it's for you to retire in five years. Maybe I want to grow it to X amount. Okay. What's your why? Everybody's different, which means every trade plan is different. You don't follow my plan. You follow your plan. But what is your why? And what are you going to do with that money? Okay. Put it down because once you create a plan that says, here's what I want to do, now it's real. It's on paper. Same thing with goals. You can't achieve goals until you start to write them down to help them come true. Okay. Otherwise, it's just words. It's just hollow. You've got to write your, your goals or your, your plan down on paper to make it effective. Okay, So start with your why. I want you to write down why I want to trade and what I want to get out of this. Your why might be, I just want to learn how to be a better investor to make a few extra bucks. Fine. Okay, What's your why? The next thing is your vision here. So if I'm a company and I'm running this as a business, okay, what's my vision? Uh, the vision for your trading business is going to project where you see yourself in the future. It paints the ultimate goal, such as achieving financial status uh, or reaching a level of market mastery, contrib contributing to uh, maybe your broader financial education. What's your vision? Where do you want to go? So not only your why is why do you want to do this? Your vision is where do I want to go ultimately? Okay. So I might be, you know, my why might be very personal to you. Your vision is where do you want to get to specifically? And then your goals, those are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-specific goals okay, that translate your mission and vision into actionable targets. So whether it's achieving a certain percentage return or growing your trading capital by a specific amount or just mastering a new trading strategy within a year, Goals set the benchmarks for success and provide milestones to celebrate and to achieve along the way. So I want you to write down your goals specifically as well. What do you want to achieve? Hey, I want to achieve 50% this year. Okay, and I'm not saying me. I'm just saying if that's your goal, okay, fine. Does that match your why and your vision? Is that what you need to do to, to achieve your vision? Or would a 15, 20% a year this year Okay, and then break those down by months. Okay, I want to make 20% this year. Okay, well, then you want to make maybe 1.7% a month. Now you have a target. What strategies can you employ to make 1.7% a month on a pretty consistent and repeatable basis? This is the foundation of a trading plan. This is the foundation of treating your trading like a business. Okay, take it serious if you want to. If you want to make serious money, you have to take it serious. You just can't be gunslinging out there and do whatever uh, you think is the next best thing. You have to take your time, put a plan together, and then the next piece from that will be figuring out what the strategies are that are going to get you to achieve that plan and what your risk management is going to be. We're going to talk about that as well. You don't run a business without understanding the risks of it. We don't leverage our business to the hilt. Okay. We run it smart. We run it with vision. We run it with a mission. We have specific and achievable goals. Everybody's responsible for those goals. If we don't hit those goals, we have to go back and figure out why we missed those goals, just like running your business. It's okay. so what I do for a living. Okay. Help businesses achieve their goals. What happens if we miss? What did we do right if we exceed our goals? How can we repeat that and make everybody better? How can we tweak our strategies a bit to make it even better? So your goals will give you benchmarks that's going to help you achieve all of the financial independence that hopefully that you, you're looking to achieve, right? Hopefully this all makes sense to you uh, and gets you started on your way to becoming financially uh, secure and maybe financially free as well. And that's really the goal here for many of us is Hey, can we become financially free where I can spend more time with my family? I can spend more time doing the things I love to do. Why do I want to make money? Okay, that's your plan for the weekend. Okay, that's your uh, job this weekend. What's your why? What's your vision of where you want to get to? Okay, and number three, what are your specific goals? Write those down. We'll get into more next week. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend.
Take care. Bye-bye.